Joining us Thank now, you. former Whitewater Deputy Counsel Saul Weisenberg, and we're happy to also see former U.S. Attorney Brett Tolman. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. First to you, Saul, one thing sticks out when we're looking at this. 34 counts of alleged business fraud? That seems really excessive. Maybe we're wrong. It just seems like overkill. Is that, are we wrong, uh, Saul? I mean, is this a sign of 34 counts? This sounds like this case is weak, that they need 34 counts. I, I don't know. It just seems over the, over the top. Well, the number of counts can be easily manipulated, and it isn't necessarily an indicator of anything. You have federal prosecutors who all the time bring you 99-count mail fraud and wire fraud indictments, and each separate wiring in aid of a conspiracy is added. And so that, that to me, that it's got a lot of counts is, is meaningless. The question is, what is the essence of the charged crime? But back up a minute, Liz. Uh, this whole idea of putting the indictment under seal, then announcing it, and then it's going to be unsealed at the time of the arraignment, uh, that's not a feature of New York law. That's, they didn't have to put this indictment under seal, and they didn't have to announce it after they put it under seal. So to me, again, you have to, you have to question, why did you do it that way? Uh, is there something you haven't told anybody about, a completely separate crime that you've found, and you want people to go and comment and then look foolish about it? Who knows? We know this office is already engaged in misdirection by making people think there wasn't going to be an indictment this week, and then there was one. So I'm, I'm very curious to see yeah. what the indictment's going so to what's, say. So what Saul just said, why have the indictment sealed, Brett? I mean, what is the documentary evidence the public has not seen yet for their case? Well, Liz, thanks for having me on, and I appreciate um, Saul's comments. I, I, I will say I, I was a federal prosecutor for a number of years, and there are reasons why you add a lot of counts. And sometimes it's just a, a nature of the statute, and there's nothing to read into it, like Saul indicates. But other times, it's definitely the war of, of the optics right now. And you want a jury eventually to believe that the more counts there are, there may be more criminal behavior. And let's face it, we've all, those of us who have been prosecutors, have added counts to put more pressure on the defendant and to make the case appear to be stronger than it is. If it's strong, then we'll see. We'll see that when it comes yeah, out. That's, as an to, that's a great as point. To, <laughs> right. As to sealing it, I think, Liz, you're exactly right. It's, it's odd that they're doing it, but I think they're doing it so that it doesn't get away from them too soon. They want to get the, 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 the former president um, arraigned. They want him booked and his photograph taken. And then they'll deal with the aftermath of how weak the case is or isn't. So right now it's about the court of public opinion. Let's get, uh, Saul, uh, Brett, let's get your reaction. Former Attorney General Bill Barr reacting on Kudlow saying they're shoehorning a books and records state misdemeanor. It us that usually ends up in just fines and penalties into a federal criminal felony. That misdemeanor, by the way, had already expired because of the statute of limitations. Watch this. I don't understand the basis for a fraud claim here. But then they take this misdemeanor, which also has a problem with the statute of limitations, and they try to shoehorn it into a, into a felony by claiming that the reason the document was falsified, the documents were falsified, was to cover up another crime. In this case, they're assuming that the payments were a campaign finance uh, violation because they were effectively a contribution to the Trump campaign. But this is an abomination. It's the epitome of the abuse of prosecutorial power uh, to bring a case that would not be brought against anyone else. Uh, they are going after the man, not a crime. What do you think, Saul? Well, your viewers need to understand that this application of the law, the New York state law, this particular application, not only bootstrapping it into a felony, which, you're, which you can do under statute, right? If you commit this misdemeanor in order to, to further or hide a, another law, it can be a felony. But what is the law they're saying uh, that he's trying to hide? It's a federal campaign finance violation that the federal government has already declined to prosecute. This law has never been tested in a New York co co court, this application of this law. And so 
draw your own conclusions. Yeah, to, so Saul, to what Saul just said, I mean, we've got Chuck Schumer, we've got, you know, Nancy Pelosi out there, Brett, saying, you know, this is holding Trump accountable on a, taste, a case that could be tossed because there's so many holes in it. It could, could be, be cost, tossed because it's so weak because of things like reasonable doubt. You know, by the way, Nancy Pelosi and former FBI Director James Comey, they're getting slammed on social media. Pelosi tweeting, indicating she thinks that Trump is guilty until proven innocent. And then you got James Comey saying, you know, it's a good day. This is the same Jim Comey who admitted leaking to the media to get the, you know, to get the Mueller probe launch. I mean, they took an oath to uphold the law. I mean, so this is really odd tweets here. Brett, what do you think of all this? Well, this is their day, right, Liz? This is what they've been waiting for, and, and let them celebrate it. But the, the wheels of justice grind slowly, but they grind fine. And what that means is they will be filing motions, and Trump will be filing his first motion, I predict, will be the motion on the statute of limitations. There's no pandemic exception to the statute of limitations that I'm aware of. Um, you can't do it through executive order, and I think that's their first more motion to get rid of the case. Okay. If they don't succeed there, then they attack the, you know, other, other aspects of it. But yes, it, this is their day, the, the opposition's day, but it is a, it is a marathon and not a, not a sprint. Yes or no, quick answer. Brett, do you think this case falls apart and goes nowhere? Yes or no? Yes. What do you think, Saul? I think the case is ultimately likely to be dismissed. Got it. Saul and Brett, thanks for joining us this Friday evening. Really appreciate it.